welcome back to another video in the grappling hook tutorial series inside Construct 3. In the last video, we got our grapple to create a vine upon collision, and we got the vine swinging. We also ran a check to see if the target hit a floor or traveled too far without hitting anything. In this video, we are going to attach the player to the end of the vine so the player can swing. So one of the things that we want to watch out for is when we're testing it now, we can just throw these targets around all day long. And they'll just keep going and going. But I don't want multiple targets to be out there on the level. I only want to be able to fire one at a time until we choose to retract the grapple. To check to make sure if we have launched the target or not, we're going to create another global variable. So in the blank space down at the bottom, let's right click, add a global variable. And I'm going to call this one grapple launched. And that's going to be a number. And it's going to be a zero or a one. Zero means no, it has not launched. One means yes, we have launched it. In our grappling launch group, our on any touch start event, I'm going to double click in the area below it to add another condition. In system, I want to compare a variable of grapple launched to zero. I want to know, has the grapple been launched yet? Zero means no, so no, it has not been launched. If we touch and it hasn't been launched, then we can run this code. Once we run this code, I want to change this so this is no longer true and this code can't run over and over again. So let's add an action, go into system, and we want to set the value of our grapple launched to true, which is one. And I'm going to move that to the very top of this group. I'm going to play that real quick. And I will launch it. And no matter how many times I click, I cannot launch another one because that condition is no longer true. Go into our OBJ grab vine. And we want to set up another image point because this is the origin point. That's where it swings from. That's where it connects to the collision. I want our player to be able to latch on to the other end of it to swing on it. So let's right click and add a new image point. And I'm going to put it at the top right corner of mine. That's just going to put it at the end of the vine. I'll close out of that. And now we can add an action to that sub event, go into our folder, grab our OBJ player, and I want to set the position to another object. And that object is going to be the grab vine. And it gives us an opportunity to set which image point we want. That image point is going to be that one we just created, which was image point one. Okay, let's play that. And this isn't complete, so it's going to look funny. And you see what happened there. I'm going to refresh that. And we'll try it again. So what it's doing when it creates the vine, you see how high up it's swinging? Well, that's where it starts. And we're telling it to put our player at that position after it's created. So it kind of jumps or teleports into the middle of the, uh, the screen there but it is setting the position to the correct spot at the end of that vine. So let's X out of that. And then down here where it says add event, I'm going to add a brand new event outside of that group and go into system and say every tick. And let's add an action to that. Go into our player and let's set the position to another object. And that's going to be that vine object and image point one. So what we're doing up here is we're setting it up and making sure that our player is positioned at the end of the vine, no matter where that is. And then down here, we're saying every tick, which is every frame that the game plays out, constantly set the player to that same image point. So let's play that. And what is happening is the player is attached to the vine that is placed off screen because we haven't set the position yet. In fact, we don't have a way of setting the position. So 
this vine right here that is off screen, this is where our player is attached to at the beginning. So to counteract that, we can create a new variable that is going to tell us whether we are on the vine or not. And I'm going to use it as an instance variable inside the player. So let's make sure our player object is highlighted and go over to the properties and edit instance variables. And we want to add one. And I'm going to call this on vine. And I'm going to use a number, zero for false, one for true. And then we can check to see if that is true or not. So in this every tick event, right below it in this gray space on my screen, let's double click on that to add another condition. Go into our player object, and we want to compare an instance variable. And on Vine, we want to know that if it is true. Only when we are on the Vine, so one for true, only when we are on the Vine do we want this action to take place. So now we need to set it to be true somewhere else in our code. And we're going to do that right here in this sub event. So as soon as we set the position of the player to the end of the vine, let's go ahead and set that variable to true so that this knows our player is on the vine. So add an action. Let's grab our player object again. And we want to set the value of an instance variable of on vine to true. So another check we want to do is up here. The grapple launched just tells us, are we able to throw one of our targets out or not? The player on vine tells us if our player is on a vine or not. And we want to check for that up here as well. So let's double click in this top part and add another condition. Let's go grab our player and find that instance variable. We want to compare on vine is equal to zero, meaning it is not on a vine right now and we haven't launched, we can throw a target out. Then once all this takes place, we're gonna tell it that our player is on the vine, and down here, we know he is on the vine, we'll just set his position every frame of the game to the end of that vine. So let's test that out. And there we go. So uh, one of the things that you are noticing is that the image point of our jump animation, which is at the bottom of the frame, is matching up with the image point at the end of the vine. We will change that because we'll change what animation plays when we are on the vine a little bit later. But for right now, this is working. We are flying on the vine, swinging back and forth. So that does work. We can exit out of that. Let's go ahead and add another action here to this every tick event. Now that our player is on the vine, we no longer need the grapple launched variable because we set it to true up here once we launch it. Once we are on a vine, we no longer need that variable so we can go ahead and set it back to false so that we may launch the target again once we're off the vine because even though we set the grapple launch to zero, we're still on the vine, which is true. So this still won't be true. So down here in our every tick event, let's add an action, go into system, set the value of grapple launched to zero. So when we were testing this out just a minute ago, I'll play it again. We know that our player is not positioned correctly. So this is a real easy, fix for that. Now that we have this variable set up on vine, we know that when our player is on vine and that variable is true, that we can have the swinging animation play as long as that is true. So if we go up into our player controls group, and I'm just going to go down to the bottom, I'm going to add an event to player controls. And I want to go check our players instance variable compare an instance variable and I want to know if on vine is equal to one which is true so as long as we're on vine I want to play that animation so let's add an action grab our player and let's set the animation to animation player swing now if you remember 
our player swing animation has the origin point right at his hand. So now that should put us in a better position. And there it is. It looks like he's swinging, holding on to the vine with his hands. All right. And actually, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and control click and drag out a copy of that comment and just change this to swing animation. So another thing I set up in this project, if I play it again, is if I shoot a target way over here, we have a huge swinging radius. I don't necessarily want it to be that big the entire time our player is on the vine. So over time, once we connect, I want the grapple to start retracting up to a minimum distance or a maximum width of the vine. So down here in our every tick event, while we're setting the position, I also want the vine width to shrink. So let's go ahead and set up that condition. I'm just going to double click in this bottom area here and go to our vine object. And I want to compare width. And I want to know that as long as the width is greater than 80 pixels, we can run this code. Then I want it to start shrinking. So let's add an action, grab the vine, and I want to set the width of the object to whatever its width is. And we'll get that by typing in the object name, which is obj grab vine dot width. So that tells us we want the width of this object. And I want to subtract one pixel for as long as this condition is true, it will continue to take the width minus one. So once it gets to 80 pixels, I want it to stop. So let's highlight this entire block of code and press B on the keyboard to create a sub event. And then we can double click on the sub event to add a condition. And let's go get that vine object. And I want to compare the width. I want to know when it is equal to or less than. So less or equal to 80 pixels. Hit done. I also want this to happen every tick as well. And just because we have every tick in this condition, once we drop down to a sub event, if we want it to be every tick here, we have to say every tick again. Let's add a condition, go into system and type in every tick. So what I want to happen once we get to 80 pixels, I don't want it to shrink any longer, but I still want the player to stay at the end of the vine. And I'm going to do that with a pin behavior. So let's go over here, make sure our OBJ player is highlighted in the project panel. Come down to edit behaviors and let's add one and let's get the pin behavior. Uh, no properties to play with. Then we can go in here, add an action, grab our player and scroll down to pin. And we want to pin to object and that object is going to be grab vine and that is going to be position only. Now let's see how that handles. I'm going to shoot it pretty far so we have way over 80 pixels of length and then it retracts us. It gets smaller and smaller and there we go. And once it gets to 80 pixels wide, it stops shrinking, but our player stays on the end of the vine. I'm going to refresh that. And let's try that out again. I'm going to go really far this time. And I missed it. Let's try it again. There we go. It's really far. He's swinging way down low. It's retracting over time. And, it, and it's not too fast. It takes a little bit for him to uh, shorten the vine length. And our player stays attached to the end of it the entire time. Okay, let's exit out of that. I'm going to come down in this area down here, right click, let's add another group. Let's call this grapple retract. And I want to move this whole block of code into that group. Let's go over to the layout real quick. And I want to show you what we did with this 
the sign behavior, I'm going to preview it again. We set the magnitude to 85. And I'm actually going to bump that up to 90. So it can swing all the way up both ways. But you see what the magnitude does. If I drop it down to 50, it doesn't swing near as far. Go back up to 90, and we swing quite a bit further. Okay. In our event sheet, I want to use this angle that we have that we create when we make contact. Well, we don't create it, but we set the position and the angle towards the player. I want to use that as a reference of how to calculate the angle. And the formula is to take that angle and set the sine magnitude to that angle minus 90 degrees. So I'm going to come down here and add an action. Let's go grab the vine object because that has the sine behavior and scroll down to the sine and let's set the magnitude and let's set it to the angle of that other object, which is OBJ. That is the grap angle object. And I want to get its angle, so we put dot angle. So OBJ grap angle dot angle, and then I want to subtract 90 degrees from it. Okay, let's see what that does. So you see where the vine is swinging from. It swings from the angle of our red angle object, and it matches that both directions. So I'm going to refresh and try this again. I'll go out further. Now it has a much wider swinging because it's matching the angle of that object that is set when the target collides with the collision. Let's exit out of that and I'll show you why that works. This is our angle object that I have highlighted. Let's say that we get uh, an angle of something like that. We shoot our target up and that's the angle from the target to where our player is. I'll put our player over here so it kind of looks like it. So with that as our angle, that's 147. If I take 147 and I subtract 90 degrees, what do I get? 57. If I take this and I move it up to the same coordinate as that and I make our magnitude 57 and I preview that, it matches that. So if I take this angle of this object, our angle object, and I move it to, let's say, 161 minus 90 is going to be 71. So we can take the vine and change the magnitude to 71. And now it matches the angle. So that's how that formula works. And I'm going to set that back to zero and turn that preview off. And back on our event sheet, you can see once we set the angle up here, then we can just subtract 90 from the angle and set the magnitude to that value. Now I want to test something else out. So let's go into our layout and I want to set something up that will allow us to test. I'm going to move our player spawner up here and I'm going to get our collision target and I'm going to make it visible and I'll drag out another instance. Actually, I'm going to put it up here about right there and then move my player up here because I want to be able to shoot down on it. But I want to show you what happens. So here's the issue uh, I really wanted to show you was that we're, <laughs> we're overshooting our angle here because I jumped far enough and shot the target behind him to where it's now calculating the degrees all the way around. And we're swinging and going over the top part. And it looks funny because we know that gravity just doesn't work that way. So we're going to take care of that. Let's go back in our event sheet. And I'm going to highlight this top block of code and press B to add a sub event. And I'm actually going to move this sub event above this other sub event. 
and then I'm going to double click the sub event to add a condition. I want to compare the angle of our grapple angle object. So I want to know if it is in between two different angles. And I'll show you what I mean. 270 is straight up. And what's happening is our player is jumping to this area and shooting the target behind us and it lands there and we're swinging all the way around. So what we can do is check to see if it is in between this 270 and then all the way to our zero point, which is gonna be our starting point in degrees, which is actually from 270 to 360. So let's go ahead and say is between angles and the first angle is going to be 270 and our second angle will be 360. So when it is in between those two degrees, we can change our magnitude. So let's add an action and grab our vine object, scroll down to the sign, and we want to set the magnitude, call for that obj grab angle dot angle to get the angle of that object. Here we're going to subtract 450 from the angle of our grab angle object. And the reason we want 450 is because if we set the angle of the angle object in between 270 and 360, let's say we hit it at 320 and we subtract 450, we know that going all the way back to zero would be minus 320. So 320, 330, 40, 350 would be right there. Minus 100 more would be 230, which would give us an angle from right here. So now our angle is set at 230, or the magnitude. We go from here, 230, all the way around to the angle, which is still at 320. So it'll have a wider swing, but it won't swing over the top because, well, gravity just doesn't work that way. So the problem with that, though, is that we have this magnitude set to the angle minus 90 that we set up before. So no matter what this does, once we get to this block of code, whether this is true or not, we eventually get to this block of code and we set it to the magnitude minus 90. If we come up here in this block, and if we right click on it and say add and insert below, this will give us another event. And go into system and just type in else. And now we can move this action into that else block. So what we're saying is, when we fire it off and the target makes contact with the collision, we check, is it between 270 and 360? If it is, it's going to calculate the magnitude to this equation here. If it's not, it's going to keep going and say, otherwise, or else, we will just set it at the angle of that object minus 90 degrees. So let's test that out with what we have. I'm going to move this to this side so that we can shoot the target down at this angle to make sure we're between 270 and 360 so we can check that part of the code. So if I shoot down at this angle, this will be between 270 and 360. And it corrects it and sends us back and forth in a much more reasonable looking manner instead of before when it was going over the top back and forth and it didn't look natural at all. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this little test collision and move our player back down here. And my snapping is turned off. I'm gonna turn my snapping back on, put him into place. Okay, back on our event sheet. One of the things that happens when we shoot the target at a sharper angle our player swings back and forth on the screen really fast. But if we slow that down, it's gonna slow it down for whenever we shoot it where there's not much of an angle, then our player's gonna swing really slow. So first off, I'm going to take this block of code, our collision with the floor and the distance check, and highlight the entire block and move it to the top of this group. And then down here at the bottom of the group where it says add event to grapple collisions, I'm going to add an event, and I'm going to compare the width of the vine. So if it's really long, 
we know that it's going to be swinging really fast back and forth because it has a lot of distance to make up for and the sine wave is set up to cover a certain amount of distance in a specific time. Let's grab our vine object and compare the width. And let's say if it is equal to or greater than, uh, let's say 300 pixels. And we can add an action, go grab that vine again, and go down to our sign. I want to set the period, which is the time in seconds that it takes to complete the cycle. So by default, we have it set at 2.5. If it is 300 pixels or longer, I want to go up a full second. So let's say 3.5. Add another event and go into system. Let's grab the else condition. Add an action, grab our vine, go down to sign, and set the period to 2.5. So if it's 300 or longer, we'll go 3.5 seconds to complete a full cycle. Otherwise, back down to 2.5. So let's test some of that out. So there's, that, that's not bad. It's a kind of a slower swing, but it feels a little bit more natural than the really wide one, which was like this. So. That's a much slower swing than what we had going before. And once we get within uh, 80 pixel width, we are below that 300. It changes the amount of time that it takes to go back and forth. So it's actually swinging faster than it was when we first attached the target. Okay. Just some subtle little changes to make it feel a little more natural for the player. All right, we covered a lot in this video and we still have a little bit left to go, but we got a big part of the mechanic already in place. In the next video, we will start working on how to dismount the vine, which will help with a lot of other issues that we still have lingering. And then we'll really start testing it out and swinging around the level. I'm gonna end this one here. I will see you in the next video. Do not forget to save.